my body don't forget to subscribe good morning my body it is a beautiful day for an awesome story enjoy A House of Pomegranates by Oscar Wilde The Young King Pale poppies were embroidered on the silk coverlet of the bed, as though they had fallen from the tired hands of sleep, and tall reeds of fluted ivory bear up the velvet canopy from which great tufts of ostrich plumes sprang like white foam to the pallid silver of the fretted ceiling. A laughing Narcissus in green bronze held a polished mirror above its head. On the table stood a flat bowl of amethyst. Outside he could see the huge dome of the cathedral, looming like a bubble over the shadowy houses, and the weary sentinels pacing up and down on the misty terrace by the river. Far away in an orchard a nightingale was singing. A faint perfume of jasmine came through the open window. He brushed his brown curls back from his forehead, and taking up a lute, let his fingers stray across the cords. His heavy eyelids drooped, and a strange languor came over him. Never before had he felt so keenly, or with such exquisite joy, the magic and the mystery of beautiful things. When midnight sounded from the clock tower, he touched a bell, and his pages entered and disrobed him with much ceremony, pouring rose water over his hands and strewing flowers on his pillow. A few moments after they had left the room, he fell asleep, and as he slept he dreamed a dream, and this was his dream. He thought that he was standing in a long, low attic, amidst the whir and clatter of many looms. The meagre daylight peered in through the grated windows, and showed him the gaunt figures of the weavers bending over their cases. Pale, sickly-looking children were crouched on the huge crossbeams. As the shuttles dashed through the warp, they lifted up the heavy battens, and when the shuttles stopped, they let the battens fall and pressed the threads together. Their faces were pinched with famine, and their thin hands shook and trembled. Some haggard women were seated at a table sewing. A horrible odour filled the place. The air was foul and heavy, and the walls dripped and streamed with damp. The young king went over to one of the weavers and stood by him and watched him. And the weaver looked at him angrily and said, Why art thou watching me? Art thou a spy sent on us by our master? Who is thy master? asked the young king. Our master? cried the weaver bitterly. He is a man like myself. Indeed, there is but this difference between us, that he wears fine clothes while I go in rags, and that while I am weak from hunger, he suffers not a little from overfeeding. The land is free, said the young king, and thou art no man's slave. In war, answered the weaver, the strong make slaves of the weak, and in peace the rich make slaves of the poor. We must work to live, and they give us such mean wages that we die. We toil for them all day long, and they heap up gold in their coffers, and our children fade away before their time, and the faces of those we love become hard and evil. We tread out the grapes, and another drinks the wine. We sow the corn, and our own board is empty. We have chains, though no eye beholds them, and are slaves, though men call us free. Is it so with all? he asked. It is so with all, answered the weaver. With the young as well as with the old, with the women as well as with the men, 
with the little children as well as with those who are stricken in years. The merchants grind us down, and we must needs do their bidding. The priest rides by and tells his beads, and no man has care of us. Through our sunless lanes creeps poverty with her hungry eyes, and sin with his sodden face follows close behind her. Misery wakes us in the morning, and shame sits with us at night. But what are these things to thee? Thou art not one of us. Thy face is too happy. And he turned away scowling, and threw the shuttle across the loom, and the young king saw that it was threaded with a thread of gold. And a great terror seized upon him, and he said to the weaver, What robe is this that thou art weaving? It is the robe for the coronation of the young king, he answered. What is that to thee? And the young king gave a loud cry, and woke, and lo, he was in his own chamber, and through the window he saw the great honey-coloured moon hanging in the dusky air. And he fell asleep again, and dreamed, and this was his dream. He thought that he was lying on the deck of a huge galley that was being rowed by a hundred slaves. On a carpet by his side, the master of the galley was seated. He was black as ebony, and his turban was of crimson silk. Great earrings of silver dragged down the thick globes of his ears, and in his hands he had a pair of ivory scales. The slaves were naked, but for a ragged loincloth, and each man was chained to his neighbour. The hot sun beat brightly upon them, and the negroes ran up and down the gangway and lashed them with whips of hide. They stretched out their lean arms and pulled the heavy oars through the water. The salt spray flew from the blades. At last they reached a little bay and began to take soundings. A light wind blew from the shore and covered the deck and the great lateen sail with a fine red dust. Three Arabs mounted on wild asses rode out and threw spears at them. The master of the galley took a painted bow in his hand and shot one of them in the throat. He fell heavily into the surf, and his companions galloped away. A woman wrapped in a yellow veil followed slowly on a camel, looking back now and then at the dead body. As soon as they had cast anchor and hauled down the sail, the negroes went into the hold and brought up a long rope ladder heavily weighted with lead. The master of the galley threw it over the side, making the ends fast to two iron stanchions. Then the negroes seized the youngest of the slaves, and knocked his gyves off, and filled his nostrils and his ears with wax, and tied a big stone round his waist. He crept wearily down the ladder, and disappeared into the sea. A few bubbles rose where he sank. Some of the other slaves peered curiously over the side. At the prow of the galley sat a shark charmer, beating monotonously upon a drum. After some time the diver rose up out of the water and clung panting to the ladder with a pearl in his right hand. The negroes seized it from him and thrust him back. The slaves fell asleep over their oars. Again and again he came up, and each time that he did so, he brought with him a beautiful pearl. The master of the galley weighed them, and put them into a little bag of green leather. The young king tried to speak, but his tongue seemed to cleave to the roof of his mouth, and his lips refused to move. The negroes chattered to each other, and began to quarrel over a string of bright beads. Two cranes flew round and round the vessel. That is it for today. Thank you for being my buddy. Have a great day.
my buddy. Don't forget to subscribe.